Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome, Odd. Welcome, Sneak Cat. Welcome, any folks viewing anonymously. Um, sorry, I'm just getting caught up in chat. Not gonna lie, I was in Photoshop the entire time, uh, pre stream. <laughs> um, ah, talking about show. Cool. Good stuff. Um, yes, I was in Photoshop. <laughs> I'm in the midst of a uh, Sims modeling competition right now. <laughs> so I've been doing all kinds of Photoshop things. I have an assignment that is due tomorrow. I, hopefully I'll be finished by tomorrow. <laughs> um... Yeah. Oh, thank you, Odd. Um, so, uh, Rose of Winter. Ayo. Uh, it is a Rose of Winter stream day. We have two more of these babies left. Um, let's get that game open. Uh, Rose of Winter. Okay. And let's see if I can get my phone to cooperate. I am steps closer to getting a new phone. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I've done the research. Hopefully I'll be making a purchase within the next week. Um, and then hopefully I'll be set up with all my all my stuff and you know functional and all that. I know my phone's just gonna fucking overheat after an hour, but I'm just gonna open up chat, uh, Twitch chat on my phone. Uh, while I, oh, I can't reach the keyboard because I have my tablet here. Um, <laughs> uh, just for now. Uh, because otherwise I would have to keep bouncing in and out. You may notice that the music has stopped. That's because I have exited the game to check chat. Um, the song always throws you off. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just the briefest flash of Lancer. Lancer's face, like, specifically that, that like, hyper, that, like, more realistic one where he's got, like, the, du the, 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 not double chin, like, the, the chin with the cleft, clefted chin. That's the term I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> yeah, specifically that, uh image. Oh goodness, let me open a board here. Um, while we're waiting for my phone to start working. Um, cause I already, I'm gonna add an image. I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna make sure, add answer face. Okay. <laughs> my little editing notes. Uh, okay, so my phone is loaded. It's actually moving smoothly. Like, there's not a lot of lag right now. Probably going to be speaking too soon. But hopefully, that will continue to be a good thing. Um, okay, let me see here. Yes, yeah, so our options are indeed <laughs> the boring looking guy or the child and hot guy. <laughs> yes, that is uh, Faulkner and... I think it starts with a C. Um, nope, it does not start with C. Elgandir. Not <laughs> dead. Not quite. It's a. It's his caretaker, not his father. But the top two are uh, the ones that we have uh, as options for today. Faulkner, Prince of Fae, and Little Prince Elgandir and his caretaker. Um, so, any opinions, or I can roll dice again. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's what we got left for, for these ones, and then the last one we'll do next week, but, uh, oh, there's that music again. <laughs> You're curious about Faulkner. 
Okay. Snake Cat, do you have any input? Oh, you know Faulkner can't be that boring considering he's Fey, but... Oh, you just think that he looks boring. He looks... He ain't no dragon. <laughs> yeah. The the dragon thing, the whole way through it... Like, I think I, I think I might have mentioned it only once through the whole stream. But there were so many in Tarun's um, route. It was basically just... Um, following the archetypical, like, vampire love story, except with a fucking dragon, which, like, automatically makes it ten times cooler, but <laughs> that was, that was it. It was just, the, it was just, like, vampire love story, except instead of, I, I want to suck your blood, it's, I want to swallow you whole, uh, hashtag no bore. Um... <laughs> Oh, God. Um, I can't believe I just said hashtag out loud. I don't think I've ever done that before. It just, like, flew out of my mouth. Uh, anyway, so that's a monumentous moment. Captured for the ages now. Um, <laughs> you're gonna watch that stream later. It was, it was a good one, yeah. It was a lot... Um, it had very, very different vibes than Kuya. <laughs> Knuckleheart's <laughs> new project. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, that's. So those are my observations about the first two. I suppose now we're gonna do Faulkner, Prince of Fay. Um, and next week we'll do Little Prince Elgandir and his caretaker. So, yeah, I think that is it, Snake Cat. Uh, there, there seems to be some enthusiasm pointed in that direction, or at least some curiosity. So, without further ado, Faulkner, Prince of Fae. <clears throat> I gather my things and head down to the main hall to meet Prince Faulkner. Almost at once, I see him, standing on a banister near the entrance. I knew he was going to be small, but wow, he can't be any longer than my hand. But he catches my eye right away, as if lit by a, be as if lit by a beacon of light. There's a lot of people here. Most of them are travelers, tired and worn out from the cold outside, slumped and inconspicuous. Prince Faulkner, however, stands with his chest thrown out, his stance firm and bold. Yeah, sneak cat. He's... Like, this isn't just, like, he fairy. He very tiny. <laughs> he looks proud, dignified, and despite his size, completely at home in his surroundings, like he walked right out of a portrait of some dashing hero from history. And to think, I thought he'd be hard to spot. Instead, I can't imagine noticing anyone else before him. He's too small and far off for me to see his expression, but I can tell he's seen me when he turns his face towards me and curtly nods. His gest he gestures for me to approach, waving his arm in a large enough arc that he can be sure I'll see it from across the room. I approach him sure slowly, still unsure. As I come closer, the details of his face come into focus. His features are sharp, smooth, and handsomer than I expected. His hard, clear eyes seem to stare right through me. I had thought he might be intimidated by me and how big I am compared to him, but I'm the one who feels nervous. Well, I'm assuming that a grown-ass adult fae, especially a prince who's had to do a lot of diplomatic things outside of the... Outside of the home, um, would be used to being surrounded by people who are larger than him. Davenport? Oh, I'm missing the context for that. What's, uh, what's that a reference to? You must be Rosemary. Thank you for answering my ad. Oh, of course, and you're Prince Faulkner, um, right? I am. Pleased to meet you. 
Forgive my appearance. I usually try to dress up when I meet someone new, but my time and supplies are short, so you'll have to suffer these drab travel clothes. Oh, the Adventure Zone. I still need to listen to that. I'm... I am working my way through, um... 400 plus episodes backlog, backlog of the My Brother, My Brother and Me podcast while I'm in... Uh, Photoshop, bouncing between that and like listening to music. So, that's that's my entrance to their the the McElroy uh, Empire. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting from the very beginning. I just like I don't know what it is. I have to start from the beginning of things. I can't just be like, oh, I'll start with the most current one, you know? Yeah. So I have like a lot. Of listening to do. <laughs> but, uh. Oh, am. Oh! You were not talking about a TV show, you were talking about a podcast. I see. Because I saw episodes and I was like, television. But no, that is. The Adventure Zone. You haven't listened to it. Yeah, I've been enjoying it so far. I mean, their oldest stuff, which is like almost 10 years old at this point, um. Some of the humor is, um, how do I put it? Like, I know that they've changed their humor up to be a little more welcoming to a wider audience, so to speak. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a few iffy ones in, in the older stuff but like I knew that going into it and I also know that they've gotten a lot better so which is like the only reason that I'm kind of just gritting my teeth through it and uh continuing on I know that it gets a lot better and there's still but then yeah and even among the older stuff there's still some really great moments like honestly okay I think the one fucking joke that stands out to me so far that is just so fucking hilarious was someone, someone, uh, in, who was like 20 or something, emailed in being like, uh, yikes, I don't know how to tell how old girls are, and I, d you know, I've accidentally spoken to someone, and then you find out they're 16, and it's like, I don't want to do that, that's bad. What are some things they can do to tell how old a girl is? And Griffin's, like, first response was, Have you tried cutting her in half and counting the rings? And I don't know what the fuck it was about that. But that just... I just think that's so fucking hilarious. Just... <laughs> that's, like, the one, like, word for word that I remember out of all the podcasts from the, of them that I've listened to so far was that one. Oh my god. Yeah, so like there's still some gems in there, absolutely. <laughs> just count the rings, I know. Oh my god, it was perfect. But yeah, I'm on a, I'm only on episode like th I just finished episode 32 out of like 460 something, I think. So I'm way back there, but like <laughs> uh, Yeah. Ooh, ooh, yes. Please do tell which one do you Furries can do infinite crime! I don't even want the context for that. Oh my god. Oh, beautiful moment from listening to very, very, very early podcasts was they had an early episode where they were, like, really critical of, like, furries just as, like, a running joke and, you know, doing the whole, like, ew, people who want to have sex with animals thing, which, like, is not really the core of free culture at all. Like, there's eh, some people who do that stuff over there. But, like, you know. And then, the next episode, they they were like, hey, we got taught by a bunch of people about what being furry actually means. So, like, that's cool. And it was just like... It was a nice... It was just like, heck yeah. And so I'm, I'm assuming there's gonna be, like, a shitload more moments like that. You can't arrest me, I'm a cat. Oh my god. Okay. I, I, I really, okay. I'm gonna, mmm. Yeah. 
You remember that one? Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a nice it was a nice moment. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to episode 33 while I do my photoshopping later. <laughs> I'm buying no cops. <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, I got distracted. Um. <laughs> oh, just so you know, um, I'm tired. I didn't get a lot of sleep. I had to get up early for a doctor's appointment. So, like, I might be a little bit more distractible than usual. Which, if you may remember from a few of the friend sim streams, um, <laughs> means a lot of wild tangents. I'm in particular remembering Tigiri's stream. That's one of the longest streams because we just have stopped and went on tangents of every single anime reference that was in there. That was fun, though. That was really fun. Um,. Seven parents and no worries. I need to get caught up so I know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, I almost don't want to know the context. But I'm sure the context makes it so much better, so I just, you know, I will. Ah, I'm gonna listen to that later, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, I know, right? We get so caught up in conversation and it's like, oh, wait a second. There's a purpose. <laughs> Yes, okay. Faulkner is apologizing for his drab appearance. That is where we were at. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. I think you look great. And I'm just wearing my regular armor, so... And what lovely armor, the, and what lovely armor it is. I look forward to traveling with you, Rosemary. He's very curt. He's probably the most, like... Uh, the or the, the least outlandish character that we've encountered so far, because Kuya was very boisterous, Tirun was very subdued, and then wanted to eat Rosemary. So you know, <laughs> but um, I'm just I'm wondering. I'm now like I'm wondering what the catch is gonna be. <laughs> Because there's gonna be something. There always is. Yeah, me too. We just stand there silently for a moment. It's just kind of weird to look at him, a fully grown man scaled down. This might sound rude, but it's hard to believe he's real. That is rude, Rosemary. God damn. Like... Rosemary, I love you, but... All of the roots that we've played so far, she's made such rude comments. <laughs> Typically aimed in the direction of the fact that the person, the prince that she's with is not human. He's... <laughs> Mad Tinkerball style? And then be unable to do much. End up like Tinker... Tinker Bowl. Oh! Oh, poor Tinker Bowl. Ugh. An F in chat for Tinker Bowl, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what I expected, but it'll take some getting used to. Not to mention the way he looks at me with those sharp, commanding eyes. I can't explain why I get so nervous when he makes eye contact with me. I'm not usually like this. I feel so dumb for getting all tongue-tied, but for the moment, I just can't think of what to say. Well then, we're not going to be standing around here all day, I hope. Do you have everything- uh, do, I'm trying to talk too fast. Do you have everything you need? I'm ready to leave- I'm ready to leave as soon as you are. Oh! Um, sorry. Yes. Yes, of course. I, of course I'm ready. <laughs> hmm. Very well. He clears his throat and adjusts his posture slightly, like he's psyching himself up to say something. I'll have to ride you for most of the journey. S sorry On your shoulder. No worry, I don't weigh enough that you'd notice. It might be a bit awkward at first, but it really but it's really the best way to way to do this. That's most of the reason I hired a guide in the first place. That's so- Yeah, it is cute! I mean, like, in hindsight- 
In hindsight, yeah, that seems like kind of an obvious solution, but dang! Oh my gosh, he's blushing! <laughs> oh! <laughs> right, that's no problem. I stick my hand out at him, palm up. Faulkner looks at it and his face falls, but only for a moment. He recovers quickly and gives me a hard smile. Uh, no. No, that's alright. Please, you don't... He waves his arms in a dismissive gesture. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm not really sure what you want me to do here. You don't need to do anything. Right then. Quick, direct, and without apparent exertion, he leaps up to my arm and begins to climb. It takes him two short, precise movements to arrive on my shoulder. All of a sudden, he's next to my face and I'm staring right into his eyes, which I can, which I can see clearly for the first time. They're the same color as his hair, a rich, dark turquoise, like a gem. Just for future reference, you won't need to touch me with your hands at all. Actually, I must insist that you don't. Understood? Okay. Er, yes, of course. I guess that's a thing for you? That's a- Rosemary, just let it be. Sorry, I didn't know. Just like, the, the way that she- or that's- that's a thing for you? My goodness. Girl, get your shit together. <laughs> I know, it is truly tragic that we don't get a new sprite, but this is, this is what we got. <laughs> what? What? Wanting to avoid being grasped about the waist by a stranger? I imagine that's a thing for everyone. I nod, but I'm not really listening. He's so close now, I can really look at him. Rosemary, you made a rude comment, and now he is answering you politely anyway, so you better be fucking listening. <laughs> I was surprised to see such a small man, but now it's not really his height that makes me stare. He's just very handsome. He looks strong and sharp, and you can tell his clothes were made just for him, because they accentuate him so well, like he was born in them. But it's not just his face, or the way that he dresses, or even how he talks. It's the way he carries himself. He seems so comfortable and in control, even in a place where everything's too big for him. <laughs> where he needs to be bopped with a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, so, so handsome. Now we're gonna go through a very detailed description of every way that Rosemary thinks he's so handsome. <laughs> There's something magnetic about a person like that. I have a hard time taking my eyes off him. He's probably very uncomfortable. You should probably not be staring at him. <laughs> Honestly, I don't usually get all flustered like this. Maybe it's just because he's so close and it's making me feel weird. Of course, it's not polite to stare or even a very smart thing to do. Yeah, so maybe reconsider your actions at the moment. Which I find out firsthand because while I'm staring transfixed at Faulkner, I manage to walk right into the door. Oh my god! <laughs> this is the short people fights for. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rosemary's like. This may be an even rougher start than with Kuya. Because she made that comment and then he flipped out because he was an ass. This is... this is... Come on, girl, get it together. <laughs> Ow! There. Now are you finished? Snaps <laughs> for that. I, uh... I like this guy. I like his attitude. He's keeping Rosemary in check because God damn it, girl, get it together. <laughs> Gosh, that hurt. Huh? Finished with what? Staring at me. If you're through, I'd like to press on. I'm not going to get any taller, if that's what you're wondering. 
Oh, no, no, that wasn't... I mean... Okay, first choice. I know, call her out. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of... At first I was kind of like... Mm. He seems very curt, but, uh... We have, a, we have our first crossroads. We can either... Not say anything or tell him why. Yeah, I'm. I'm feeling that too, sneak cat. I feel like it's a little too soon to start waxing romantic. Like, y'all are familiar with the game, so you know it's gonna happen eventually. But like right now, maybe a bad idea. Better not say anything. I'll make a mess of it. I um, nothing. Never mind. Yes, yes, I know. You're not used to seeing a man of my height. I'm sure the shock will wear off soon enough. My own shock may linger, however. I'm still bowled over by, this, by the sight of such a cavernous mouth hanging slack-jawed. Oh my god! He's really going for the throat! <laughs> hey, that's uncalled for! Oh, so you can be rude to me all you like, but I can't fire back? Oh my god! <laughs> He's silent for a moment after that. Faulkner seems so sure of himself, I guess I didn't think I could actually hurt his feelings. Maybe I should apologize. Um, I'm sorry, Faulkner. I really didn't mean to stare. <sighs> of course you didn't. This is your first time meeting a fae person, is it not? You were so wrong, you love him. I know, like, call her out. Damn. Um... Yes, I guess that's pretty obvious. Painfully so, but that's fine. I'm sure I did plenty of staring the first time I met a person of your size. And I do apologize for my comments, too. You seem like... like a lovely person. <laughs> oh, it's all... <laughs> That'll end there. It seems like he was really straining to get that out. Let's forget about it for now. The trip will be much more pleasant if we're friends, yes? Yeah. Okay, I like this guy. For sure. He flashes me a smile, and I blush and look away. I hope he didn't see me go red. Well, he's very close to your face. It's likely that he did. <laughs> but how could he miss it? My face is huge to him. Well, at least he doesn't know what I was really thinking. If he did, I'd be even redder. Ugh, I can't believe I've already embarrassed myself, and we haven't even left yet. This trip is going to be tough. Off we go. I do my best to push those thoughts out of my mind and head out on a snowy trail, leaving the tavern behind us. Oh my god, look! So, we don't get any talk sprites necessarily, but we get this lovely little close-up. Look at Rosemary, she has three mouths. <laughs> uh. I can't feel him riding on my shoulder, but I'm very aware of his presence. It's going to take some getting used to, but it's probably weird for him, too. I'll do my best to be polite, and hopefully not make a fool of myself anymore. As soon as we make it to the foot of the mountain, a blast of ferocious cold hits us, at, hits us all at once. The wind whips my hair back, and I squeeze my eyes shut as tiny shards of ice sting my face. Whoa! Mount Needle Shirt knows how to say hello! Faulkner stays quiet, but I can feel a faint tug on my hair. I realize he's holding on to steady himself. His deft hands tangled in my hair. I'm glad my face is already red from the cold. He is so tiny and her eyes are bugging out. Come on, Rosemary, you can do this. Get it together. I think that's just gonna be like the theme of this particular episode. Like, more so than the others. <laughs> He's just, Rosemary, get your shit together. Okay, listen. 
I'm seriously not trying to be rude or anything, but... Oh, that's a bad way to start a sentence! That's a really bad way to start a sentence! God, I don't even want to see what's coming next. Okay... Are you gonna be okay there? With, like, the wind and everything? Okay, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Yes, it's all right. If it were necessary, I could make this trip my by myself. I've made plenty of similar excursions in the past, and they've never and they never gave me much trouble. The sad fact is of it is, however, that going solo would take much longer. The snow alone might add a full week to the journey. And in this case, time is of the essence. Oh, yeah? What's the big hurry? You have a fancy party in Starlight City to go to? Actually, yes. I'm getting married. Aww. Wait a second. What the fuck? So, this is not gonna be a romancing route, and now Rosemary's getting got all flustered, flustered for being like, he's so handsome. So, I'll be curious to see where this route takes it then, because it's definitely not going in the direction of the two of them having a romance. Or at least it better not, because he's fucking getting married. <laughs> married? He's getting married? I know it's silly, but I feel oddly deflated. Well, that certainly is very, very important. <laughs> you can't be late for your own wedding. That's one of the main things about getting married, I assume. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. We'd better make haste. There's something hard in his eyes as we say- as he says that, though. Or am I just imagining it? Oh, yo, I also just realized that makes it a bajillion times better that we didn't just straight up front be like, It's because I think you're so handsome. I was staring because I think you're handsome. Because then he would have been like, excuse you. <laughs> that would have been a different kind of disaster. <laughs> Either way, I'm sure it's none of my business. Once the prince is secure on my shoulder, I start walking. So, uh, what's the Fey Kingdom like? Didn't your people, like, invent the airship and stuff? How come you didn't take one of those to Starlight? We, in we invented a great many things. An airship is, indeed, what carried me to the tavern, but our ships aren't made for flying in harsh weather. The tavern was as far as they would bring me. Did stream? Mm, I hope it didn't cut. It damn well better not have cut. The tavern was as far as they would bring me. After that, I had to arrange an alternate mode, alternative mode of transport. I kind of resent being reduced to a mode of transport. But it's alright. As I've said, I've done my fair share of hard travel in my life. This shouldn't be much different, even if I must partially rely on you. Hey, I'm not that bad. Am I? Oh, no, of course not. It's just... Try to understand. I look at you, and it's hard to imagine how such huge, thick legs and feet aren't just constantly tripping over themselves. Wow, he just came out and said that, didn't he? Well, you know, you said some weird things too. Also, to answer his... His his pond pondering though. If you know, if humans of Fey are the same like ratioed proportions, so to speak, then there wouldn't really be much of a movement different. You know what I mean? But, um... We... We back? Aw, oh, for the love of fuck, stream cut out. Uh... So what happened? Well, whoops, that's wrong. So... Faulkner talking about his hard travel, and... He just doesn't understand how such huge thick legs and feet aren't constantly tripping over themselves. Uh, and that's where we're at. <laughs> Stream <two. laughs> I mean... Oh god, that's certainly one way 
need to put it. <laughs> yes, he's getting married. Oh my goodness, just how far back did stream cut? Oh dear. Okay, you know, give me a minute. I'm pretty sure I have like 20,000 tabs open because I was trying to find a background for my, um... <laughs> My my modeling thing. I was trying to find a background to Photoshop on. So let me. Okay. I'm gonna bookmark a few things and close the tabs. Okay, maybe that will help. <laughs> mm, hopefully that will take some of the demand off of the Wi-Fi. Whoops, the daisies. Uh, okay. Um, honestly, yeah, it kind of is. Wish it wasn't, but well, the past few streams have been... Uh, pretty wonky um yeah i it might actually be my cpu and not my internet connection i discovered the other day um i was rendering the second uh weekend stream and i went to just like toss a random video up on my computer so that my it wouldn't go to sleep while I walked away because um, it really slows down my computer when it is rendering a video and but the video I wasn't even playing like a video file and I was like what the fuck's going on so I checked task manager and it turns out that when I render my videos in 1080p it uses 90 to 95 percent of my CPU <laughs> It uses almost all of the power my computer fucking has. Like, so I actually, I don't care, oh, you know what, I could just do that literally right now, out of curiosity. Um, task manager. Tell me what is up. Okay, it can't be my CPU. OBS is using a shitload more than everything else that's open right now, but it's only using around 20%. And, you know, 20, 30... Oh, there's only like 32% of my CPU being used right now, so it should... So that's not the cause. I just thought I would... Out of curiosity, double check that. Yeah, I know, it takes a lot of fucking power to render those videos. <laughs> Okie dokie, get in later calls. <laughs> okay, um... Actually, while we're pausing, I'm gonna have a quick drink of water, and then we'll keep going. <laughs> okay, um, water has been had. Rosemary's a little shocked at Faulkner's comment, but, uh, she doesn't have much room to talk. Anyway, that's my opinion. <laughs> I like to think I have a pretty thick skin. If someone doesn't know- if someone doesn't like how I look, they can just go ahead and keep being wrong. But with him, I feel like I can't just let it go. That's- that's totally ridiculous. When have you ever seen me trip over a thing? I suppose that's fair. You are rather steady on your feet. It's just that navigating a dangerous stretch of land such as Mount Needle, it requires delicacy, finesse, a certain precise quality of movement which a person of your size simply cannot have. Ooh, that's mean and also not true. Your legs are like massive pillars, well suited to hold a slab of rock off the ground, but I wouldn't ask them to dance. Oh, like you're such a good dancer. Why would you even say that in response? You don't, you literally just fucking met him. How the fuck do you know how good of a dancer he is? 
Like, just tell him he's being rude, and then prove him wrong. It Over the course of your journey through the... This is gonna backfire, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm not the best of the best, but I am classically trained. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't care. What do you know, anyway? I'm delicate. I'm precise. I'm graceful as anything. Oh, yes, of course. So much so that you walked into a door within five minutes of meeting me. I knew he was gonna bring that up. I told you, that was just because... Because... Oh, never mind. Besides, that could happen to anyone. Who among us hasn't walked into a door? I have never once walked into a single thing that I did not intend to walk into. That's the first thing they teach you at the academy. What? His mention of an academy stirs something in my memory. Yes, that's right. Some of the scholars I used to work for mentioned some big famous school in the Fey Kingdom. Oh, you mean the Lef Lefada Academy, right? You went there? I heard it's very... prestigious. Or more accurately, snobby. But I'm not gonna say that out loud. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I'm impressed that you've heard of it. Oh, why? Because you think I'm too big and dumb to know what a school is? I never went to any fancy academy, and I probably couldn't even get into yours. I'm trying to keep the resentment out of my tone without much success. Don't be silly. Of course you couldn't get into La Fata. Oh yeah? And why not? I'm gonna guess that it's because the school is face-sized. You'd never fit through the front door. Bingo. <laughs> the look on her face, she's just like, the realization sets in and she's like, oh, fuck. Haha, <laughs> you got me. Yes, I've had that one in my pocket for a while. Achievement unlocked. What is this, a kingdom for ants? Ah, <laughs> oh, the names of some of these fucking Steam achievements. I take a small break from walking and lean against a tree. It's good to know he has a sense of humor, but I'm still not sure how I feel about how he talks to me. I steal a glance at him, and from the look on his face, he seems to have some idea of what I'm thinking. Rosemary, I... I do apologize if I've been rude. You may not believe this, but I don't take any pleasure in being so venomous. I've been feeling anxious lately, not that it's any excuse. You, you're helping me, and I should be more appreciative. A kingdom for ants, I know, right? Okay, so, choice number two. Apology accepted, I hope I wasn't rude either, or do you really think my legs look huge and gross? <laughs> I feel like... he's He's been a little rude, but, like, Rosemary made some questionable comments to I feel like we should just accept the apology, make amends you know I don't see any massive point in pushing the issue because it looks like he's trying to be a little more open now yeah, apology accepted apology accepted I hope I wasn't rude either no, no, you... You have been very accommodating to me, so far. I could hardly ask for more out of a companion. Thank you, Rosemary. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just trying to do my job, you know? Of course you are, and you're doing it well. I should certainly be more respectful and try not to pick on you. It's uncouth. It's just that, well, you must understand that, from my perspective, you are rather large, so it does not always occur to me not to mention it. I don't mind you mentioning it, but you shouldn't make assumptions either. You wouldn't like it if I called you small all the time, would you? He smiles, but his eyes narrow. I can tell how much he hates it. As a reasonable person, I can understand why you might see me that way. But the fact is, I'm not small. I happen to be the ideal height for what I am. A perfect specimen of a fey gentleman, some would say. Well... I'm the perfect specimen of a rosemary, then. 
He smiles at me again. This time I can tell it's genuine. I can certainly believe that. Point taken. So, I guess you're probably not used to people my size, huh? On the contrary, I deal with your kind often. I travel regularly on behalf of my kingdom. If a man truly loves his home, his duty is to leave it, so he should know its worth all the more by comparison. Taking that to heart, I visited every major city in the land. <clears throat> I'm not content to be some pampered prince sitting at home giving nothing back to the people who gave me everything. Though I do admit, I've been handed many things on a silver platter. Enrollment at Lafada Academy, to name just one. A school which many of those less fortunate than I would have given anything to attend. I never forget that fact. I've always worked as hard as I could and excelled at all of my studies. My skills are hard-earned, not simply with the result of my impeccable breeding. I wanted to take full advantage of what I was given, and so once I finished my education, I put those gifts to work in service of my kingdom. I travel, meet diplomats, research, and engage in politics firsthand. I even serve in our volunteer army. Served in our volunteer army for a time. <laughs> it's okay, Faulkner. I believe you work hard. You don't have to keep trying to convince me. Oh, pardon me. Was I rambling? <clears throat> I can. I'll continue to work hard as long as I live. That's why I'm here now, on this mountain, this journey, with you. But you're crossing this mountain so you can get married, right? That's not exactly hard work. It's a blessing. Hey, relationships take a lot of hard work and dedication. Don't downplay that. <laughs> That's what my folks say about marriage anyway. They've been married for, like, forever, so they're all corny about that stuff. <laughs> Yes, for some people it comes easier than others, but all relationships take hard work. I'm sure they're right. Okay, look, eventually he's gonna confess to having cold feet. Like, I can feel it coming in my bones. I can just feel that it's, it's, it's gonna happen. <laughs> but, Rosemary, may I be honest with you? In a way that may tarnish your spotless impression of me? Cold feet. Cold feet. <laughs> um, of course, Faulkner. The truth is, my feelings about this marriage are mixed, to say the least. I'm fucking on it today. I've called so many of his... <laughs> so many of his shots. Mmm, an arranged marriage or something that he doesn't want. Ooh, that is another good prediction. I mean, don't mistake me, I do feel excited, but then, when I think about it for too long, I start to feel somewhat ill. But perhaps it's natural to be nervous. I suppose it goes without saying, but I've never done this before. Well, it doesn't necessarily go without saying. Sometimes divorce happens. This is just life. Wow, really? You've never been with someone before? My dear, I most certainly, certainly have. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying so hard to keep, like, keep the flat affect reading, reading the rest of that line, but I just, like... <laughs> the way that he said that, he's like... Do not doubt that I've been around. <laughs> yeah. He apologized for being rude, and now he's discussing that he has some mixed feelings about his uh, upcoming marriage. I've never been married. I'm not sure how to be a husband. There wasn't a class at Lafata Academy for that particular discipline. Hmm. Let's think about this. Are you at least marrying for love? Yes, I believe I am. Ooh, that was not so sure. He- it took him a moment to answer. Did he really have to think about it? And there's that hard look in his eyes again. And why should I feel sad talking about this? I barely know him, but I feel it all the same. Well, that's just 
you know, having some empathy for him. <laughs> Davenport Fox. I gotta find out who Davenport is so I can figure out why that's a funny statement. <laughs> well, if you're sure, I know it will work out. If you're... Sorry, I just, uh... My lip piercing, my jewelry is doing something weird. Okay. I think I fixed it. This jewelry is like... Like, it's surgical steel, and it's like the jewelry from the piercer, so it's not like really crappy jewelry from Hot Topic or whatever. But, like, the ball ends still will occasionally loosen a little, and I have to make sure that I keep them tight. <laughs> it's... Uh, I don't know if it's really worth the money to replace it. But I have already lost, one, lost the end off of this at least once. <laughs> so, maybe one day I'll throw down the cash, but that's fucking... That's, oh, it can get a little pricey, so I'm just gonna put up with it for now. Anyway... Hmm. Rosemary. Well, if you're sure, I know it will work out. If you're sure you have the right reasons, that's like a solid foundation, and everything else will build on top of that. You may be right. You are singularly wise, Rosemary. <laughs> no way. I just pick up stuff here and there. Do you really think so? Well, of course. How could I not? Er, uh, hmm. How about you? There must be someone special in your life. Oh, no, no. I've never had anything like that, actually. Ever since I left home, I've been trying to become a knight. It's busy work, and I don't stay in one place for long. So I don't have a lot of opportunities to, like, meet people. Actually, I was kind of excited to meet you, or, but that's just fine, it'll happen when it happens. We got, like, just a little hint of him, like, being a wee bit romancy with Rosemary, and I didn't like that. I don't know how this is gonna end. I hope that it's not, like, I hope it's not some sort of, like, run away with me, and then he's like, yes, I will run away with you and leave my bride at the altar. Um, or groom, but this is, this is a pretty heterosexual game, so, you know, but, uh, <laughs> um, I'm hoping it's not headed that way, because I'm not gonna like that. But, yeah, I feel like happens when it happens. Let's- let's not encourage whatever the fuck you did there. <laughs> but that's just fine. It'll happen when it happens. I'm pretty happy with my life. Maybe some things could be better, but mostly I'm good. Well, that's all one can ask for, isn't it? Any more and you're just being greedy. Okay, for the last, like, whole ass fucking conversation, every single sentence that Faulkner says starts with epilepsis. Um. Yeah. Just an observation. <laughs> Faulkner, you seem kind of, I don't know, sad or something. You are happy to be getting married, aren't you? Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? Thank you for your concern, but please put it out of your mind. It's none of my business how he it's none of my business how he feels, right? Okay, moving forward in our journey. Okay, um we're about good for a break right now. So let's see. We'll do a quick save. Um, toss up the break sign. Uh, 
Oh, shit. Well, we're gonna take five. It's like three minutes too, but we just hit a scene change, so I feel like it's a good time to uh, stop for a minute. So, we're gonna take five minutes, a little break, a little break, break, and then uh, keep on moving uh, when we get back. Greetings, welcome back. Uh, welcome, Sneak Cat. Welcome, any folks viewing anonymously. Um, so, this is a little bit of an odd stream. So, last night my internet fucking ate shit. <laughs> to say the least. It completely cut out for a full three hours. Um, and of course that whole thing started in the middle of stream. So, uh, this is uh, like the second half of yesterday, so to speak. Um, we're gonna be playing Rose of Winter. Uh, but we're going to be continuing from the save file where we ended off yesterday, which was, thankfully, not in the middle of a scene. Um, it was kind of uh, it at like a transition point, so that shouldn't be too bad. Um, yes, I never had to load a file here before. We go into the resume menu, and we have our file yesterday with Faulkner. Now, the internet didn't cut at 12.28 a.m. It actually cut a little earlier than that, but that's just when I decided to close the game. That's when I fucking gave up on the internet coming back within a reasonable amount of time. Um. <clears throat> some water. So, oh, it does have an autosave uh, from our last choice. However, we're looking for this one down here. So, okay, back in we are. But let me just double check chat. I just got it up on my phone. Just want to make sure. Nope, not missing any messages. Good stuff. Let's get back in, and uh, see if we can finish this thing off uh, around midnight. <laughs> right, so where did we leave off yesterday? So yesterday, the last choice that we made, we were talking about, so Faulkner, so Faulkner's a fairy, well, he's a, he's a fae, specifically, pardon me, wrong terminology, um, Faulkner is a fae, he's very tiny. Uh, and he has to stand on Rosemary's shoulder for them to travel. Um, he's traveling to Starlight City so that he can get married. And the last part of the conversation we had, he was expressing... Uh, or get close to expressing some doubts about whether or not he really was feeling this marriage. Never outright said that, but seemed generally pensive. And that is where we are at. If you are interested in watching the first half of stream, um, it is still up on Twitch. I still, all of my streams are set to uh, stay archived for the allowed two weeks after streaming. Um, so even if something, if something isn't up on YouTube yet, uh, check Twitch, it will likely be there. Um, so that's if you want to get caught up right away. Otherwise, this whole thing will be going up on YouTube within a few days. <clears throat> We're both happy to move on, so we keep walking. Or, I do, at least. Faulkner keeps riding. So far, Mount Needle hasn't lived up to his dangerous reputation, but I know anything could happen out here. I do my best to keep my guard up, and eventually we come to a path that splits. Okay, I've studied the trails. I'm pretty sure we should follow this lower path. It's the long way around, but it'll be much safer. Nonsense. If the higher route is faster, that's the one we should take. Um, but we'd be much more likely to run into more dangerous creatures. Also, it'll get much colder up there. I mean, it's cold now, but it could be way worse. I don't want to argue about this. Do you remember what I told you? Time is of the essence. 
sure, but if we get attacked, or if the weather acts up, it'll end up slowing us down more, won't it? Listen, it's my job to keep you safe, so... Ha, huh, not likely. You're here to be... Well, for lack of a better term, my steed. I'm responsible for you, so I'll be the one keeping you, keeping you safe. Having said that, we shall do as I say. Excuse you. What? If you even, like, tape, take one step into the snow, you'll be up to your head. And if it keeps on snowing, you'll never get out. Rosemary, what's the matter with you? What do you mean? I'm just stating the obvious. How could you possibly protect us? Ugh, forget it. Oh, so that... Y'all, uh... I... Hmm, Rosemary... I'm sure he's got something up his sleeve, but like... Yeah, she also has a point that this is really rough terrain, and they gotta be working together, not against each other. Wow, they are at each other's throats. They kind of been at each other's throats, like, this whole time. They're both being snappy. <laughs> Rosemary. I suggest you keep that gigantic mouth of yours shut. What the fuck is- what am I- what is this root even supposed to be? It's just been, like, Faulkner and Rosemary having, like, battle of the minds this whole fucking time. What? What's that gigantic thing about? You think you're better than me because of my size or something? Not because- not because of your size, no. I'm sure you'd be just as clumsy and dim-witted at half my height. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, I told you, I don't like it when you talk to me like that. That's too ba- that's too bad. Have- have you forgotten I'm the prince here? I can say what I like. Oh my god, and la like- the stream yesterday, he gave that whole speech about how he always, you know, wants to keep it, he always is trying to, like, keep in mind the kind of privilege that he has, and, like, all this shit, and then he says this fuck shit, and it's like, uh, you're about to ruin everyone's- oh my god. <laughs> you're not wrong, though. <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. <sighs> yeah. Spades. <laughs> uh. um. <laughs> A smiley face, that's all you have to say for yourself. <laughs> oh, God. But, like, yeah, this... Mm. He is skirting a line. His whole, oh, his whole, oh, I always try to keep in mind my privilege and use it to the best of, you know, the best way that I can. And then he says something like this, and it's like, y'all, your head is so far up your fucking ass. Fake woke bullshit. <laughs> You'll obey my command, and that's final. As I've said, should we come to any trouble, I will protect you. No, you won't. I'll protect you. I've had enough of this. We're taking the high path, and that's final. Onward. He gives a sharp tug on my hair, which hurts a lot more than I expected. Y'all, that is so fucking obnoxious. Ow! Hey, that is not okay! But we end up doing what he wants anyway. How is it possible that I'm getting bossed around by someone I could literally step on? Because... That's, that's just fucking rude. Rosemary, good god. <sighs> I guess he's right. That is That this is what he hired me for. There's nothing much I can do. I trudge on, feeling a little resentful. Just when I thought we were getting along better. Yeah, not gonna lie. If I was put in this situation, um... <laughs> I don't know if I can handle it. I don't know if I can handle being down talked to like that. I just be like, you know what? Fuck you and fuck your money. Like, I'm taking the low road. You want to go the other way? Be my fucking guest. <laughs> mm. 
The trail is steady. There's snow and wind, but it hasn't gotten too harsh. Maybe this will be okay after all. Although it's a little hard to pay much attention to my surroundings. The first time we argued, we got over it pretty quickly. This time, though, when we're not sulking, we're snapping at each other. You see? You see? Your worries were for nothing. I knew this path would be better. Next time, it would do you well to listen. Shut the fuck up, y'all. You, you damn well know that y'all just got lucky. All right, all right already. Gosh, you're loud for a little guy. Ah, how surprising. Another comment about my height. Have you no imagination? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if your brain were smaller than mine, despite the size of your head. Oh my god! <laughs> but also, like, Rosemary, y'all, you gotta get over his height. That's, it's seriously fucking rude as hell to continually bring that shit up. Your mustache looks like shit. He looks like a fucking grandpa. Like, I, that's... Hey, if we're gonna if we're gonna do a little of our own roasting on stream here, he looks like a grandpa. I have no idea how old he's supposed to be. I'm assuming he's supposed to be a young adult, given that that's generally the target audience of this piece of work. <laughs> yeah, his mustache looks like. Mm. Yeah, it just he just gives me he's giving me grandpa vibes. I feel like I've known someone with a mustache like that before. Grandpa. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <clears throat> it's probably like the silverish grayish hair. I know it's supposed to be teal, but like or teal or turquoise or something, but like it just looks gray to me, like a like a blue gray. <sighs> Is that what you're so mad about? Look, I didn't mean little in a bad way. I only meant Rosemary, stop digging the hole. <clears throat> but I don't get to tell him what I meant. I'm interrupted by a chilling sound that cuts through the air. A woo! Um, not to change the subject, but now I'm kind of worried about whatever that was. Er, behind you. Slowly, I turn around. Two piercing eyes stare right at me. Wolf indeed, sneak cat. Alright. Let's see how Faulkner performs. All, all of his boasting about being able to save her. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. A wolf. No. Wolves. A whole pack of them. Fierce fangs bared. They're... Guttural growls rising in a chorus. We're surrounded. See? What did I tell you about the high road? Now we've got to deal with a wolf attack. Perhaps you weren't entirely wrong. Yeah. Eat your fucking words, Faulkner. Holy shit. But not to worry. This sort of thing is well within my wheelhouse. No, no, no. I'm handling this. You got us into this mess. I'll get us out. We shouldn't waste any more time bickering. The pack is closing in on us, and they look mean. Ooh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I look back over the chat, and I go, and I see, oh, puppies! I don't know if they're that friendly, though. <laughs> so. Wait and see what they do, or rush forward to attack the largest wolf. My personality is very wait and see. I feel like that is my inclination here. But what are y'all thinking in chat? They're just giant puppies who want to play. I don't know, they look pretty mad though. <laughs> you go for it? Wait, go for what? Go for which one? My okay. Yeah, because, like, what if you leap forward to attack the largest one, and then it's like, you know, they they get in formation, and then you're, you're fucked. <laughs> like, they, like, they protect the alpha, and then you're like, well, I'm dead. 
Okay, wait to see what they do. I decide to wait to see what they do, but while I have my eye on the larger one, another wolf attacks. Before I can register what's happening, it's on my legs. I kick it away and almost topple over. Two more wolves leap atop me, scrambling for a weak spot in my armor. Okay, so maybe we should have attacked the largest one? It just says that she had her eye on it when she did that. If she'd moved, then she would just be getting attacked by the one that she was attacking and the other one, and then they would be dogpiling again again. Piling on her again. Hmm. I can take them. I know I can't, but there's just so many. More than I thought. I grab for my sword and manage to knock them away. But as I get my bearings, I realize for the first time that Faulkner is no longer on my shoulder. Faulkner? Faulkner? In the second it takes for, takes for me to cry out, the wolves are on top of me again. I need to get Prince Faulkner before the wolves do, but I can hardly get them away from me. The largest wolf, Fangs Baird, lunges for my throat. I've got to do something fast. Huh? The largest wolf stops short and crumples into the snow. There's a sm there's a small spurt of blood at, the at its shaggy neck. What the? I catch I catch a glimpse of a small shape darting through the air. And another wolf falls down dead. Another another flash and another wolf falls down dead. The rest of the pack are glancing around, panic, searching out their invisible attacker. The tiny shape lands on a boulder, and I finally see it for what it is. Prince Faulkner! There's a bloodied spear in his hand, glittering like glass in the snowy sunlight. Mm -hmm. With all that boasting, like, I knew he would at least have something up his sleeve. Like, this isn't Kuya here. <laughs> From here, I can see his face. He doesn't seem scared, or even very excited. He has an expression of measured calm, of certainty. That of a man who is doing a job and knows how to do it well. He leaps again. It's amazing, impossible how fast and high he can jump. And another wolf falls, pierced through the throat and killed instantly. By now, the rest of the pack have caught on. They dashed off and disappeared into the mountain. Faulkner, that... <laughs> that was amazing. With one last graceful leap, Faulkner returns to his place on my shoulder. He wipes his brow, exhales, and gives me a conspiratorial wink. Bit of a shame to have to slaughter them like that. Poor things are only doing what nature intended. Still, if nature is red in tooth and claw, then there are times we must strive to match it. How do you jump around like that? You must be so strong. Like, really strong. I, it just comes from combat training and experience, nothing more. Oh, he's blushing. I, this whole route got me on edge. Like, I don't like the fact that they're getting like low key into each other, even though he's like literally going to his wedding. Um, the tension of them constantly bickering, not my thing. Um, stressing me out just a little. <laughs> Still, I'm not one to reject a compliment. Thank you. Although I can't help but notice that you didn't do much. Hey, I was caught off guard. If you'd given me a chance, I would have... We're interrupted by a low, vicious growl. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a lithe and muscular shape slink towards us. A snow leopard, poised to strike. Maybe that's the real reason the wolves ran away. Before I can blink, it lashes out, unleashing its deadly claws. Faulkner notices only too late. Oh dear. Fortunately, I'm ready to move. I twist my body, jerking my shoulder away so that Faulkner is just out of reach of those claws. Leopards are much more dangerous than wolves. I'm gonna have to finish this quickly. The leopard pounces and I duck at just the right moment. I grab my sword and in one fluid motion I slice my blade into the beast's chest right through the heart. The leopard doesn't have time to cry out in pain. It gasps, voiceless, and dies. Well then. Once I'm sure the leopard is done for, I retrieve my sword and wipe the blood off in the snow. Rosemary, I have to admit, that was some very nice footwork. If you hadn't moved at precisely the right moment, I would have been killed. 
You're not nearly as clumsy as you look. Ha! <laughs> High praise! Really, though, I mean it. You were amazing. Thanks, Faulkner. I'm sorry I doubted you when you said you could protect me. You're... you're obviously an amazing fighter. Well, it's clear to me now that the same goes for you. Once again, I find myself staring at Faulkner a little too long. This time, though, he stares right back. Um, that spear of yours is pretty cool. Is it made of glass? Oh, it's a type of clear diamond, actually. A special product of the Fey Kingdom. We've found many uses for it. Would you like to see it? I take it gingerly. Even though it's like a toy spear in my hands, it's surprisingly heavy. Wow, it feels hefty, even to me. It must be hard to carry. No more so than your... No more so than your... Blah, blah, blah. No more so than your sword is for you, I'm sure. That thing is almost as big as you are. That thing is almost as big around as you are. How... Okay. Question. How did she not notice that he was carrying this spear around? Like, in the sprites where we see him with it. It's like the length of his like longer than the length of his torso so like where the fuck was he hiding it i just and i just realized that in the back of my mind i wasn't questioning that at first because of like video game logic and like inventories and s yeah exactly strife specifies like honestly my brain defaulted to fucking homesuck and being like ah oh, yes the strife specifist. This makes perfect sense. <laughs> but in reality, they haven't put... Like, that's not a part of this mythos at all. Like, Rosemary's just carrying her damn sword around. There's none of that shit here. So where the fuck was he hiding that this whole time? Yeah, I guess you're right. I had, a, I had to train a long time before I could even lift it. There you are. If a weapon is not first a burden, then any fool could use it. You and I, Rosemary, are no fools. Anyway, this spear is another gift from my home, so I'm happy to carry it regardless of its weight. You know, my sword is kind of a special thing from my homeland, too. It's made from an alloy that northerners discovered a few hundred years ago. You don't think you want to know? <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Really? I've never heard of that. Do explain. There's that fucking music again. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll save every scene change, just in case something happens. Which hopefully it doesn't, because I just want to get through this thing. <laughs> in one piece. Okay. We spend the rest of the day walking on and chatting excitedly about swords and weapons. Although it's cold and harsh out here in the trail, I hardly notice it. Okay, so, observation. Thing that I've noticed so far after having played three of the four, um, routes. They, the plots of them tend to revolve around both sides of the equation, making incorrect assumptions about the other person based on their, like, uh, their race, so to speak. Uh, I guess that's how it would be referred to in the fantasy context. Um, yeah, and then hijinks happens and then they prove each other wrong. <laughs> I think that's the formula here. Faulkner wasn't exactly shy, but I've never seen him so talkative. It's not until we notice that the sun has set that we realize we should stop. And anyway, for my for my money, a good halberd is... Oh, it's gotten dark. Should we stop and make camp for the night? Yeah, that's a good idea. I had no idea how late it was. You know, this was nice. <laughs> it really was. I haven't had a good shop talk like that since my academy days. <laughs> and I've never, I've never really talked to anyone like that ever. I've never known anyone who was uh, interested in swords and stuff. Not in the same way I was. 
I guess I didn't realize how lonely it was until now. Yes, I... I know what you mean. It doesn't take long to make camp in a nearby cave. We settle in and rest by the firelight. I, I'd say the journey is going pretty well so far, give or take a wolf attack or two. <laughs> I quite agree. You know, you've been working hard all day carrying me and slaying beasts. Why don't you sit back and let me make you some dinner? Sure, that, sure, that sounds good, but I only brought rations, like dried meat and stuff. I don't know what you can make from that. Rosemary, Rosemary, Rosemary. Do you take me for some ill-prepared dullard, wandering around without the, without the makings for a fine cuisine always at close hand? There's a typo there. That sh there should be a space in between without and the. <laughs> um, are you saying you've been carrying around the ingredients for a fancy dinner this whole time? Always. Here, sit back, my dear. Allow me to take you on a culinary journey. Uh, I'm not picky, but sure, whatever you say. Faulkner immediately gets to work. From his pack, he pulls some small strips of what looks like some kind of smoked fish, a clove of garlic, which he has grabbed with, which he has to grab with both arms, and some other ingredients in small jars that have been diced into incredibly fine powder. I just realized why that spear looks so familiar. It looks like Undyne's spear. It's just got it's just uh got that one extra kind of offshoot at the top, but it looks like Undyne's. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, also, like, how- and how big is this pack? Like, how much is- how much information are they hiding behind on, like, the back of his sprite? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it fucking- it fucking looks like Undyne's spear. Like the the blue glowy stuff. <laughs> he uses his spear to cut up the garlic, and I realized that preparing ingredients must be really hard work for Fae people like him. Still, the work goes quickly, and from how confident and at ease it, he is, it seems like he enjoys cooking and does it often. I guess this is why I never quite think of Fa I never quite think of Faulkner as pompous. It's not a facade he's putting on. He's got the skill to back up his attitude. Even if you have the skill to back up the attitude, if you get obnoxious about it, then you know. It's not fantastic. No, we're good luck. <laughs> so it's X. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, they're descended from. They are descended from. Homestuck. Kids and trolls. Yeah, like, so honestly? Because they're like. If. This clove of garlic is so big that he has to wrap both arms around it. And he's got a whole bunch of other shit in his backpack, plus a spear. Like, there would be some kind of visible pack or something showing, like, above his shoulders or something like that. Soon, he presents me with a small tray of food. Even though it's tiny, it looks delicious. Smoked fey minnow with ginger and garlic. It's a staple of the palace. You love it. Uh, although I suppose for you it's more of a sampling than a meal. I do apologize. I didn't think I'd be cooking for anyone but myself. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I'm sure it'll be delicious. Bottoms up. <laughs> Without wasting a second, I grab the plate in my fingers and shove the food into my mouth. Faulkner looks slightly aghast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so good. I can't believe you just made that. And you and you can make it whenever you want and eat it all the time. Ugh, you're so lucky. Rosemary, you just swallowed the whole meal in one go. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, was that bad manners? They were really delicious though. And am I crazy, or did I taste a hint of lemon? <laughs> oh, you noticed that? Yes, that's my personal twist on the classic dish. It complements the Feminino's natural, um... Rosemary, are you alright? What? Oh, um... Emotional whiplash? Hello! What is happening? 
It's only when he says something that I realize I've started crying. Hastily, I try to wipe my tears away. Goodness, I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh, this is so embarrassing. I'm sorry, Faulkner, please ignore me. My cooking wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> no, that's not the problem. It was really good. Too good. I... I haven't had a meal cooked for me since I've been home. Aww. I thought that might be it. My mother used to go fishing and fry up what she caught for us with salt and a twist of lemon. I guess tasting this is... It brought up some... Some strong memories. Faulkner comes close and hops onto my pack, so he's high enough to put his hand on my arm. Even though he's so small, his touch is surprisingly warm. Why the fuck would him being small have anything to do with his temperature? Y'all, come on. It's very soothing. <laughs> Thanks for being sweet to me. I'm sorry, I really don't cry very often. You miss your home. It's understandable. I miss mine, too. How long have you been away? A long time. I left to become a knight. I don't want to give up. Not ever. This is more important to me than anything. But sometimes I just miss my family so much. And I can't help but daydream about what it would be like to just go home. I can't do that, though. Not until I can make them proud. Not until I can make myself proud. I'm just stubborn like that, I guess. You're not stubborn, you're passionate. You're determined. It's admirable. For whatever it's worth, I'm already proud of you. It takes a stout heart to make a sacrifice for something worthwhile. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. You know, it. I think it's a good sign that your cooking made me cry. <laughs> it means the taste of it went straight to my heart. <laughs> you're a great chef. Faulkner smiles, but looks away and runs a hand through his hair. He chuckles low under his breath, the way you do when you're not happy about something, but you have to laugh at it anyway. Faulkner? Is something the matter? It's just that... I'm cooking for you and talking to you about your feelings, your hopes and regrets, your dreams. Oh my god, this is going a weird direction. <sighs> I, suppose this, I suppose this must be what it's like to have a wife. I... I could get used to it if she were like... He doesn't finish the thought, but casts me a meaningful glance. Mmm, don't like where this is going. Haven't liked it from the beginning. Still super not liking it now. What is happening? Is he saying that he wants his wife to be like me? I feel a little rush of excitement and a twinge of guilt. Um, <laughs> I bet you'll be happy to see your fiancé again once this is all over. Actually, Rosemary, I've never met her. Who? Huh? What do you mean? Who was it who predicted that it would be an arranged marriage? It was odd, right? I'm... Or was that you? I think it was Odd who predicted that it would be a political marriage, but correct me if I'm wrong, because... Y'all called this shit yesterday, like, way early in the stream. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish Odd was able to hang out with us today, because... They called it... You were thinking it, but you didn't speak it. Okay, you called it too. I, that did not occur to me until someone said that in chat, and then it was kind of like, hmm, that is a good point. But y'all called it. Here we are. Political marriage, and he's having second thoughts about even wanting to do it in the first place. <laughs> it's, a it's a purely political marriage. I decided our union would be the best course of action for my kingdom. I sent her a letter declaring my intentions a month ago, and she agreed. I have no idea what kind of person she is, or how I'll feel about her. All I know about her, about her is that she's fey like myself, and wealthy. 
Other than that, my bride is a stranger to me. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. I feel a strange fluttering in my chest, at once dizzy and at the same time light and free. So, so you're not really... I mean, you're not in love with someone else? Or anyone, I mean? No, in fact, until I reach the city, I suppose you could say I'm unattached. Hmm, this is going weird places. That's interesting. My face is red again, but since we're warming by the fire, there's no blaming it on the cold this time. You must really love your kingdom, huh? Yes, I do. My kingdom, my people, they've given me everything. Not just the academy or the royal family. The kingdom itself, my home. Our cities are so beautiful and unique. Standing amongst the buildings, you can't truly be unhappy. It elevates everything, even what's inside you. And since other kingdoms are so big and made the world and made the world in their image, we have to make our own world by ourselves. It's all ours, only ours, and it's perfect, and I couldn't be more proud. At home, I wake up at the crack of dawn just to see our buildings bathed in sunrise. I've seen a lot of this world, and there's nothing in, in it more beautiful than that. It makes my heart ache that I can't share it with everyone. I... I would have liked to share it with you, perhaps. I could come see it, couldn't I? I suppose you could visit, but you could never... I could never see it like you do. No, you never could. Well, maybe I could see a piece of it. What do you mean? Show me something you learned there. Something from the Lafada Academy, maybe. Then it's kind of like I'm seeing a part of your kingdom, isn't it? You said you were classically trained in dance, right? I suppose I could dance for you. <laughs> I'd love to see that. What's with the mocking tone of voice? I assure you, my dance is quite beautiful. Shall I? He stands and gets into a graceful position. Wait, not like that. I can hardly see you from way down there. Do you have a better idea? I could... I could hold you. If you were in my hands, I could see you up close. Oh my god. And of course, this is, you know, the, the bringing it back to that whole thing where he was like, Y'all don't touch me with your motherfucking hands. And now it's gonna be like, Oh, he's allowing her to touch him with her hands. It's all intimate and stuff. Like... <sighs> mm. I know it's a political thing, but... Y'all still got something waiting for you here. This is making me feel a little weird. I don't know if I like where this is going. I don't know. Okay, so here's... I see. So this is the decision maker. So it's not so bad to be touched by me, is it? Or never mind, I'll just lie on the floor. Hmm... I don't know, I feel like pushing the issue is like... Not... Like, I feel like if we push the issue, then he'll be o like, he'll be okay with it now. But then, like, what boundary did we just cross? In terms of all the other stuff that's happening here, right? Yeah. Never mind, I'll just lie on the floor. Oh, well, you don't have to, or that is, if you don't mind. Carefully, I lie my stomach on the ground. I'm on a blanket, so it's pretty comfortable. I rest my head on my hands and find myself gazing level with Faulkner. Forgive me, I might be out of practice. It's been years since I learned this. He stands with his arms and legs in a grace, arm and leg, singular, in a graceful curve. I wait patiently for him to start. 
He's so close, and I have an excuse to stare at him this time, so I'm going to take advantage of that. After a few moments, he still hasn't started to dance. Actually, he looks kind of troubled. Is everything okay? It's just... I feel rather foolish doing this on my own. It... this should be a couple's dance. I wish I could take you in my arms and really show it to you. Uh, oh! Yeah, that would be good. And anyway, I find myself distracted. Forgive me, but I can feel your warmth all around me, rather... rather like being embraced. And your face is so close, it's hard to think about anything else. He's staring right at me now. No wonder I'm distracting him. My face must look so huge. I wonder if it's strange or sort of scary. Rosemary, you are so beautiful. Oh. He steps closer to my face. At once I feel very awake and intense, open to notice every detail and feel every touch. What about my dance? What about my dance? <laughs> Oh, who cares about that? Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. He comes closer and closer. I feel small hands on my cheeks and then my mouth. His fingertips brush my lips, softly and slowly. I can't help but shiver. I had no idea I'd be so sensitive there. Ugh. Those tiny fingers are so light, and the way they touch me with such finesse. I've never felt anything like it before. And then I feel his mouth. He presses his lips all over mine, slowly and deliberately moving from one spot to the next. I feel the pleasant brush of his mustache, his teeth, gentle yet urgent. It's the strangest kiss I've ever had. It's the only kiss I've ever had, in fact. But I can't imagine wanting anything different, anything more. I'm sorry if that was untoward. I couldn't help myself. I'm glad you couldn't. I want to stay awake, but I'm so exhausted from the journey today, and I can tell Faulkner is tired, too. I get comfortable on the floor and pull a blanket over myself. I wait for Faulkner to get his own bedding ready, but he doesn't move. Instead, he pulls gently on my fingers, wrapping them around himself. He wants me to hold him tonight. I hold him to my chest so he'll be warm, and we fall asleep like that together. If you roll over, he gonna be dead. Anyway, that just fucking happened, I guess. Okay. <gasps> hmm. We set out together early the next morning. For the first few hours, we don't say much. There's a beautiful sunrise, and it's snowing, but not too heavily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, sneak cat. That's that is pretty much all there is to say. But all that shit that just happened. Hmm. <laughs> Faulkner rides in his usual place on my shoulder. I wonder if I should bring up what happened last night. It was so nice, so unexpected. I hate thinking that it would be over so soon. I want more and more nights like that. I want to keep learning about him and being surprised by him. I want him to learn about me, too. But he's getting married, and there's no way around that. Unless he decides... No, no, there is no point in thinking like that. I'll just get my hopes up. Just as I decide... Blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna slur my words together. Okay, I need some water. Just as I decide that it's better to not say anything, Faulkner breaks the silence. Rosemary, I... I th think I like you very much. And I hope you'll forgive me for being so direct, but do you feel the same way about me? Oh my god! <laughs> See, this is the first time we've ever actually been given a say. Um... 
Although, oh, both of the answers are yes, so technically we do not get a say. But, <laughs> wow, okay, so, I've had a crush on you the moment I saw you. Um, referring to the staring in the tavern. Or you were a jerk at first, but yeah, I like you too. Because he was a fucking jerk. <laughs> Yikes, I actually don't know which one would be... Okay, jerk it is then. I'll trust you on this one, because I'm kind of like... I'm not sure which one would be optimal, but let's go with... Yeah. You were a jerk at first, but... Yeah, I like you too. <laughs> I admit I was a bit standoffish. I'm very glad to hear you've come around. When I meet strangers, especially those who aren't fae, I have, be I have to become a different person in some ways. I have to be the stately commanding prince. I have to show that I'm in control, that I know what I'm doing, instead of just being myself, whoever that is. <laughs> If I went a bit overboard this time, it's because I really wanted you to respect me. Not that it's any excuse, but uh, I just wanted you to know that. I can understand that. Sometimes I feel like I have to act like someone tougher than I really am, just to get through stuff. The other one's kind of over the top. Yeah, I guess that one would be a bit too gushy. Maybe we were both trying a little too hard. That's certainly not the first time I've been accused of that. <laughs> Me neither. Er, I'm struggling with how to say this. I suppose I'll jump right into it. I've been with many women in my life, but I've never but it's never felt like this. I feel as though a window has opened in a room that's been closed for a long time. I'm not saying I'm in love with you. That would be rather forward, considering we've only just met. But you're the first person with whom I've ever felt... I don't know how to describe it. Giddy? Hopeful? When I fell asleep last night, the only thing I could think was how much the prospect of another day with you excited me. You're the first person I've ever wanted to fall in love with. My heart feels like a bird fluttering around in my chest. There's something so wonderfully scary about hearing someone say the very thing you hoped they would. About the very... Bleh, I thought that was like cutting off, but it is not uh, continuing the way that I thought it would. Let me try that again. There's something so wonderfully scary about hearing someone say the very thing you hoped they would. Like you're afraid you'll wake up and find out it was just a dream. Gosh, Faulkner, that's... I... I don't know what to say, but you must understand, I never thought that I would feel this. I thought I wasn't the kind of man who would ever fall in love. And it's because I thought of myself that way that I even entertained the idea of a, po of a political marriage in the first place. If I knew I'd never marry for myself, why not marry for my kingdom? But now, I... I just wish I'd met you first. Then again, if I'd never made this journey, I wouldn't have met you at all. Ugh, oh, damn it all to hell. But if you feel differently now, I mean, I'm not saying you should leave her and marry me instead, but maybe you could slow things down and we could just spend more time together and, like, see how things go? That would be okay, wouldn't it? He looks at me with such longing. It takes him a moment to gather his thoughts and speak. Rosemary, I... I can't make that choice anymore. I need to tell you something I haven't told anyone. I believe if I do, you'll understand. Um, okay. What the fuck you gonna pull out of his sleeve? What the fuck you gonna do? My heart starts beating faster. I don't like the sound of this. A few years ago, my father let me look at the Fey Kingdom's finances. The royal family, the entire kingdom. We're going bankrupt. We can't, easily we can't easily participate in global trade. How can we benefit from goods that are too gigantic for us to use? And we invest so much in the brilliant minds of our scholars and inventors. We build airships and factories and all manner of amazing things. 
but we see almost no profit because the west because the rest of the world is just too big. Our greatest innovations are children's toys in their hands. Faulkner, that's awful. You and your people deserve more than that. It's just one of many problems. For example, only Fay are able to live in our, only Fay are able to live in our kingdom. It's too small for anyone else. For all we spend making our city so beautiful and so advanced, we can't even benefit from tourism. Fay families keep leaving to seek their fortunes elsewhere, but there's no immigration and no new blood. Nothing replaces the ones who leave. Our people only have two options, stagnate or dwindle. We have dwindled. Slowly and gradually, our population, our resources. In a handful of generations, we'll have nothing. Oh, wow, I had no idea. No, we no, we don't like to share our weaknesses, if we can help it. Sometimes we don't even like to admit them to ourselves. But I don't get it. How could one marriage possibly fix a problem that big? Huh. <laughs> it's so simple, so perfect. I thought myself a brilliant forward thinker for devising this scheme. Now I almost wish I never had. <sighs> I'll try to explain. As you're probably aware, not all Fey people live in our kingdom. A good many families left to live in other kingdoms with the rest of you. And many of those wayward families have thrived financially. However, I believe they suffer in a different way. The Fey Kingdom turns its back on them as traitors and deserters. They lose touch with their home, their culture, their history. They must struggle every day to exist in a world that wasn't made for them. Even when they succeed, they are always suffering. Always too small. And because they are, in essence, exiled, they can never go home to where they belong. But these wayward Fey are still my people. I know they are. The woman I've been in contact with is the daughter of a particularly wealthy Fey family, one that has lived in exile out in the southern kingdom for centuries. Her family's, riches, her family's riches alone will be enough to keep the royal family thriving for generations. I'm starting to see where this is going, but that doesn't make it any easier. Our union will not so only solve the Fey kingdom's financial problems temporarily. I believe it will also help, the, help address the problem in the long term. My bride-to-be is quite well known, even among those in kingdoms who reject outsiders. Well, those in the kingdom who reject outsiders. And I, of course, am the prince. We represent the two halves of the Fae. Our marriage will be seen as a symbol of unity. The Fae are one people, no matter where we live or what we do. The Fae kingdom need not turn its back on those who left, and can welcome their experiences and prosperity. The wayward Fae need not lose their connection to their history, their culture, or their people. In fact, we might even encourage more to venture out and make their fortune, knowing they can always return. I can bring the Fae together in a way that lasts. We need never be estranged and impoverished again. But... but why does it have to be you who does this? Couldn't it be someone else? Rosemary, I am the only son of the king and queen. It can only be me. You hope they just stay friends? Yeah! Or, all other alternative solution, if the person that he's marrying is down with it, is like, you know, polyamory. Tossing that idea out there. <laughs> and even if that weren't the case, I know, no I know nothing but happiness and, and success in my life. But I know that, that everything I have, everything I am, my people gave to me. Which means my life is not truly mine. I owe it to them. I do marry out of love, but not for a woman I've never met. I love my kingdom. And I must save it, or how else can I stand to live? Do you understand? Of course I do. I knew you would. You care so deeply about what you love. We're the same in that regard. If you were to lose your home, or or if you found out you could never be a knight, you'd never give that up for me. You'd never give that up for me, would you? I don't know if that matters so much anymore, is... I feel like that's the same dilemma as, um... With the two options before, where the one on top seemed a little bit more 
out there. Yeah, I'm gonna say no as well. No, you're right. I never give up being a knight. Of course you're right. I want to be a knight more than anything. I want to do some good in this world. But in this case, it doesn't feel good to be good. Ugh, I wish I could just be selfish this time. Just do what I want and let everyone else worry about themselves. <sighs> I wish I could too, but I can't. Neither of us can. <laughs> You wouldn't think so so to look at us, but we're very much alike. I guess we are. That's sort of comforting in a way. I feel his hand on my cheek. His kiss, like a little drop of rain, so small and soft you're not even sure it was real. I'm going to miss that. We keep walking a little longer. I guess there's not much to say after that. And soon, sooner than either of us expected, we can see Starlight City way off in the distance. It's so beautiful, glittering like a pile of jewels off on the horizon. I hate it. Looks like we'll, looks like we'll make it there by nightfall. That didn't take long. Mount Needle hasn't really loved up to its dangerous reputation, has it? It certainly hasn't. I almost wish we'd had a bear attack or something just so we could stay a bit longer. We wait there a moment, listening to the wind, almost hoping for some feral growl to echo in the trees. Of course, nothing happens. Everything's perfectly fine. Nothing's ever, nothing's ever there when you need it, is it? No. The weather is looking a little rough. Maybe we should make camp early, to be safe, of course. Yes, I think you're right. The snow could get much worse at any moment. Ah, <laughs> We wouldn't- we don't want to tempt fate, do we? The weather is absolutely fine. We're lying to ourselves, and we know it. Just so we can have one more night together. But if one night is all we're going to get, I'll take it. It doesn't take long to set up camp in a nearby cave. In fact, the sun is still up by the time we're done. I feel a little guilty about it, knowing Faulkner's bride-to-be is waiting for him. But not that guilty. We eat dinner together, me sitting with my legs folded and him perched on my thigh. Haha, <laughs> it's kind of nice having you sit there. Blushing already, are you? It's quite becoming. N no I just... Okay, maybe I'm blushing a little. I mean, you're touching my thigh. That's so... so... intimate. <laughs> yeah, she's like, it's kind of nice having you sit there. And I'm just, I'm just sitting there like, where is this going? Because <laughs> we got real close to some shit in Kuyas. Root. I don't think it will ever get quite so explicit, but like... Kuya, Kuya's Root was like, a bit of a culture shock when they when all of a sudden they started talking about hey you know you know i got to touch your chest would you like to touch mine and i'm like whoa what are we getting ourselves into here <laughs> rosemary my dear please don't be offended by my asking but have you been with anyone before oh my god <laughs> I remember you said you haven't been in love with anyone, but have you been, as you put it, intimate? Oh my god, is he really asking straight up? What makes you ask that? He softly rubs his hand against my skin. Even though his hand is so small, as his touch feels electric. Well, if you see this as the height of intimacy, it occurs to me that we can do much better than that. Oh my god, y'all. You're getting very concerned for where this is going. Me too! I did not mark my channel as not safe for work, so it better not get explicit all up in here. 
I blush a lot stronger when I hear him say that. Which was probably his intention. But my heart also sinks a little thinking about our situation. Maybe it's for the best that we can't keep seeing each other. Goodness, Rosemary, I didn't mean to pressure you. We don't have to do anything. I just thought, since it's our last day together... Of, of course I want to, you know, do things. <laughs> oh, Rosemary. Gosh, I can't believe I just said that out loud. But what can we even do? I mean, I'm so big and you're so... So... We just don't match up, you know? Are we? Oh my god. <laughs> oh wow, I'm just like... <laughs> I am sure a great many fanfic authors will show you a number of ways that you will be able to remedy this situation. <laughs> Where is this conversation going? <laughs> Don't be silly. Our difference in size was never the problem. Didn't I tell you, dear? I've been in love before, but I'm, I haven't been in love before, but I've been with many women. Not all of them were fae. <laughs> I'm not so close-minded as that. You've... you've been with women my size? Many times, yes. Well, perhaps none so muscular. <laughs> Gosh, um... But that means you... you figured out how to make it work? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> So I guess this is the conversation we're having right now. I don't even want to know how many fanfics exist of this exact scene going in this exact direction, but like, not stopping at any point. Oh my god. I mean, it was good for both of you? Listen, dear, I'm not one to kiss and tell. I do try to be a gentleman, however unsuccessful my attempts may be. Having said that, let me assure you, I have never once sent a woman away unsatisfied. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I think... Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god! Okay. <sighs> Get it together. <laughs> There's a great number of things I could do with you. <laughs> You're dying. I'm dying. Y'all can hear me, like, slowly withering away. Like... <laughs> I can't really imagine... I'd be happy to demonstrate. <laughs> Oh my god! Yo, if the screen doesn't fade to black, I don't know what the fuck I'm gonna do. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, please. Oh my god. Fade to black. Thank you. That, like, once again skirted way too close to my comfort line for marking the channel off as, like, not safe for work or whatever. Like... <laughs> Mmm. We got some epilepsis happening here. We're just up to fill in the blanks. That was fucking wild. And you know what the- <laughs> I know, like, I don't even have to search and I'm not fucking going to. I am never fucking going to. But I know for a fact that there are probably just a fucking shitload of fix out there filling in the gap of what this scene actually looked like. Oh my god. That was a- that was a ride. Okay, we got more epilepsis. There's three, so then... And we're back. <laughs> oh, that was... a ride. 
Some time later, we lie down together and Faulkner falls asleep on my chest. I stay awake a little longer. I can't stop thinking about what we just did together. Achievement unlocked! Good things come in small packages! <laughs> These fucking Steam achievements, I swear! If there's war, there's whatever the fuck this is. Wouldn't be surprised if whatever the fuck this is and war have somehow crashed into each other in the world of fanfiction because he's so fucking small. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we're I we're probably pretty we're pretty close to down this route. Let's let's see where this goes from here because what the fuck. <laughs> It's nothing like what I expected, and more amazing than I'd hoped. How to, how to even describe it? I don't know where to start. Let's just say, after that, I'm even sadder that I won't get to be with him anymore. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, like, get it, girl. You know what? Fuck it. Like, there's... I don't... Ah. Uh... But I'm also happier than ever that I met him in the first place. When I do drift off to sleep, I doze peacefully. You're dead. Yeah, I was like, whew. That is, until I'm awoken by a small figure shaking me awake before sunrise. Rosemary, wake up. Ugh, five more minutes. Come now, we don't have all day. Wake up. I open my eyes to see him standing on my chest, jutting his face into mine. All right, all right, I'm awake. Um, last night was really special, by the way. Well, yes, that goes without saying, but we need to get going now. Are you that excited to go get married? Quite the opposite. I've decided this is all so silly. I found someone I want to be with. I'm not going to throw that all away over what? My pride? Sticking to some foolish decision I made months ago? See, I was afraid this was how it was gonna fucking end. No, nonsense. So come on, we're going back over the mountain the way we came. We've got plenty of supplies and we know and we know that together we can handle anything this dreadful place can throw at us. I know we can make it back. And I'm not getting married to some stranger when I'm in love with you. L love? You... Love... Um... Wow. Faulkner, I... I think I feel the same way. But... We can still go to Starlight City. You, you can tell them the wedding's off once you get there. There's really no point in going back the way we came. My dear, it's symbolic. For goodness sake, don't you have any flair for the dramatic? Ha! <laughs> I like it when you call me dear. But, but of course you're right, as you usually are. They've known each other for two days. This is too much. <laughs> the end is leaving you with a little with a kind of sideways face. Yeah, I'm kind of like, what? Like, mmm. Mm. Let's hurry and get going, regardless. I don't want to wait any longer to tell them I'm in love. Y'all have known each other for two fucking days. <laughs> and so we gather up our things and rush out towards the city. I can't remember ever feeling so light and giddy. Running t running through the snow together, we watching the- run, run, blah, 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 blah. Wow, Cadence, gotta talk about- talk words speaking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Running, th running through the snow together, watching the sunrise and, the s and turn the sky pink. He reaches to brush a snowflake off my cheek, and I tremble a little at how close he is. His body gives off so much warmth, even though he's so small. You made that exact comment earlier, and again I'm gonna say, the fact that he's small does not have a bearing on his temperature. It doesn't take long before the trees thin out, and the air, start the air starts to warm, and we find a road. It's the path that will take us straight to the heart of the city. Here we are. This is it. It sure is. Staring down at that 
at that road, I feel like I can see our future unfold before us. Faulkner, however, is oddly quiet. I know we shouldn't get ahead of ourselves. I mean, we've got to get to know each other first. But it would be kind of nice to live here together, someday. The city is so beautiful, right? I can picture us in a little house by the park. Faulkner, did you hear me? I... I don't know. Rosemary, I'm sorry, we can't do this. You mean living by the park? Well, I'm not married to the idea. Don't be foolish, you know that's not what I meant. His voice is so suddenly cold, it shocks me into silence for a moment. I feel like I've been slapped in the face. I'm sorry, but... This can't be what you really want. You only just met me. Whatever feelings we have are just a rush of infatuation, right? Well, maybe, but isn't that how real feelings start? I want to see where it takes us. You don't have to worry, Faulkner. I want this as much as you do. Faulkner? Come on, Rosemary. I'm trying to make this easier. What? Um, but you were saying before that you, um... What are you talking about? Are you really going to make me say it out loud? In that moment, my heart sinks into my stomach. The look on his face is so empty and sad. I know that I've lost. I really can't be with you. It was so stupid for me to imagine I could, even for a moment. When I saw the city on the horizon again, I remembered the promise I made to my people. I can't break that promise. To do that would be throwing away everything I care about. But don't you care about me? I care about you. I know you do. I just can't. I can't care about you. I can't afford to care about you. I don't want to hear any more. I almost start to cry right there, but I won't give him the satisfaction. You didn't have to jerk me around like that. You didn't have to give me hope and then yank it away again. I know, I know. I'm a fool. You see, I got carried away in the moment, and I just ended up hurting you more. That's why I have to stop being impulsive and do what's right. Honestly, though... There was no way we were ever going to do this, neither of us. It was just a nice dream to pretend to believe in, for a moment. I didn't feel that way. I thought it was real. I guess I really am just some big dumb oaf if I was stupid enough to believe that. You... you said you loved me. You're the first person to ever say that to me. Was it not true? I love my kingdom, that's all. Ouch! <laughs> oh, Faulkner. And just like that, it's over. We walk down the path in cold silence. Once we're in the city, I let him kiss me softly one last time. I let him down onto the road and we go our separate ways. Because he's so small, it doesn't take him it doesn't take long for him to disappear into the crowd. And as soon as he does, it it hits me little and as soon as he does, it all hits me at once, like a weight on my chest I can't get off. I sit in the middle of the town square and I cry. It isn't quite accurate to say I'll never see him again. For one thing, he'll become king and I'll see his coronation. But more importantly, in the years to come, Faulkner's plan will work out exactly the way he knew it would. Oh, we're getting an epilogue for this one because they didn't get together, okay. I'll see his face and portraits everywhere, a symbol of hope and progress known across the land. The face of the man who united the Fae and together with his queen brought his people to a new age of prosperity. As for me, I become a knight. I get to do all kinds of amazing things. But I never forget Faulkner, or the time we shared together. As the years go by, even the hurt I feel fades away. 
In the end, I'm proud of him for doing what he did. It was the right thing, after all. Our time together was just a tiny chapter in this great book of life, in the great book of his life. Why should he have thrown everything away over someone like me? Still, I'd be lying if I, n if I said I never wished it were different. I feel an ache inside whenever I hear his name. I never again carry him on my shoulder, but I always carry his memory in my heart. God, that's fucking cheesy. <laughs> I can only hope he does the same with me. He said he didn't really love me. Maybe I'm naive, but I never believed him. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> so... That was Faulkner. And yeah, that was good. Like, that was like... That was probably the biggest emotional roller coaster of the ones that we've read so far. Like, I found it hard to get the same kind of, like, emotional depth out of Kuya or Tirun. Um, because Kuya's whole thing was just that he was being pompous <laughs> and putting on airs in a rather obnoxious way and then Tirun's whole thing was the, the point of conflict was that he wanted to eat her <laughs> um but yeah this one it kind of, this one definitely was emotionally engaging in a very different way than the first two and it yeah it, you know it kind of had me going up and down there for a bit but in the end, like, that was good. That was a really fucking good one. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Yet another one that almost pushed the limits of what I would consider streaming. But... <laughs> um... God, that scene was fucking hilarious to read. Um, the, the, God, the two of them in the cave. Um... Yeah. Wow. Okay. So... <laughs> suppose that is all for today. Um, Saturday night, we shall resume uh, the Homestuck epilogues. Um, Friday night, I have D&D, so it is a Saturday-Sunday weekend. Um, yeah. Okay. Well... I hope that you all enjoyed this Rose of Winter stream. Um, we got one more to go, which will be next Tuesday, because it's a Saturday-Sunday weekend. That'll be next Tuesday. And we will do uh, Little Prince Elgandir and his Caretaker, the last brute we have left. So, thank you all so much for hanging out. I hope you had a wonderful time. I certainly had fun reading this one. It was a very interesting story. Um, I hope you have a wonderful evening, whatever you may be getting up to, or a wonderful rest of your day, whatever you may be getting up to. And, uh, yeah, fingers crossed that I'll be able to see y'all either homestuck in this weekend or next week for the finale in Pros of Winter. And uh, from my end, that is good night. <laughs>